Hello everyone, how are you? Today the topic of our discussion is local alignment algorithm. We have already discussed global alignment. So first of all, going into the local alignment algorithm, uh, uh, we should have an idea about what are the similarities and differences between global and local alignment. This will help you to understand more clearly the uh, both local and global alignment. So first of all, I have wrote some of the points in the first slide. You will get through them uh, during the presentation as well. But to make it more clear, I have just wrote in the first slide. Point number one, again, similar to the global alignment, we have to make a matrix of n plus one and m plus one sequences. If these are two sequences, m and m we are comparing, right? So for example, if the length of the sequence n is five, then we will build a matrix of six right and for if the length of the m is seven then the, we will make the matrix cells seven plus one that is eight right so next point alignment start from the top left to the right bottom this is uh, common between both local and global alignment like we start from the top left column uh, column or cell to the right bottom column or cell right so this is similar between both local and global again mismatches matches and gaps good score for matches penalties for mismatches and gaps this is similar in both global and local alignment but there are few differences uh, like uh, in global alignment the value can go into the negative value if we are adding gaps again and again then the value will be negative but if we are adding uh, but in local alignment we add uh, negative we do not add negative value if the value is going into negative like if we are adding a lot of gaps in the sequence of dissimilar region then we straightforward add a zero instead of the negative value so we cannot go beyond negative in local alignment uh, and one more difference between local and global is that uh, in global alignment the trace back start from the right bottom cell to the left top uh, cell right to find the best end to end alignment that that's why it is known as global alignment but in trace back uh, for trace back in local alignment we start from the maximum value we identify the maximum aligned cell for example if the value is 8 so we start from maximum value in the cell is 8 so we start from 8 and we go back trace back to the value that is 0 uh, which is greater than 0 so that is the region we align in local alignment so these are the few differences between local and global next we will start in the next slide we will start the uh, uh, algorithm that is local alignment here uh, there are a few differences and similarities between uh, we have discussed now uh, the overall uh, you know summary of local alignment importance and uh, is that uh, local alignment was uh, introduced in 1981 by smith waterman we aligned the two sequences and we identify the best uh, uh, alignment line sequence between the two sequences that is called one stretch of high sequence similarity that can be more than one and uh, but in global alignment we try to identify end to end region so the the diff why there are two types of alignment local and global like if the uh, if the if we are comparing two mostly conserved sites or we are comparing two uh, very closely related species like human and chimpanzee then we can use global alignment to identify end to end sequence because already they are very close to each other but if we are aligning uh, two species which are extremely distantly related to each other for example we are comparing human versus drosophila that is fruit fly then uh, there will be a lot of regions which are dissimilar so when we uh, try to identify end-to-end -end alignment then all the dissimilar regions will be aligned and they will insert a lot of gaps and the overall alignment will become poor so instead of using global alignment for those type of species or those type of alignments we should go for local alignment to identify the conserved sites this uh, so they are so you can in some in short you can say that global alignment is for closely related species with similar sequence length and local alignment for is better for distantly related species with varying sequence length so here you can see that there is an example of uh, sequence alignment between uh, human uh, human and fruit fly that is drosophila and you can see that this type of alignment is not looking good because here we are aligning using global alignment sequence as i discussed in the previous slide that when you are comparing distantly related species you should try to identify the conserved sites rather aligning end to end region because here you can see that after aligning um, end to end there are a lot of regions which are showing very poor alignment like here here and uh, the rest so overall the sequence alignment looks very poor so it's better to use um, uh, local alignment instead of global alignment right so
so make it look more uh, prettier and uh, and make it look uh, like a good alignment so yeah so you can see that there are very few regions which are closely related and which are very similar to each other so what if we do local alignment instead and you can see that after aligning local locally or using local alignment now overall picture of the alignment looks very uh, good and uh, you can say that there are there are very the there is a relatively good alignment between human and drosophila because there are some sites which are highly conserved to each other so you can see that the overall difference that when we are using global alignment the alignment was looking poor but when we are using local alignment the alignment looks good right so here you can see that this is the overall uh, summary of uh, smith waterman algorithm the what actually smith waterman does uh, in this um, in this uh, algorithm that we try to identify highest scoring uh, set of sequences or uh, with the best alignment between the two sequences and uh, again uh, we can uh, you can see here that there is a point that uh, best alignment is the the best local alignment is the best alignment of all possible sub sequences of sequence 1 and s2 so there can be more than one alignment between the two sequences best uh, uh, stretches of matches and if when we start to build the matrix after making the n plus 1 m plus 1 rows and column we add zero in both the first uh, zeroth row and zeroth column that is the first row and first column of the of the matrix and then you can see that the recurrence relation used to fill the table is this is very similar to what we have done in uh, what we have done in uh, global alignment that uh, for uh, diagonally adding matches and mismatches we use this uh, uh, equation for adding gaps and uh, uh, for horizontally and vertically we use these the next two equations and unlike uh, uh, needleman ones or global alignment this is the fourth possibility that is to identify regions which are distantly related and insert zero for example if the value is going into negative there are a lot of gaps as i said previously that instead of adding gaps we will add zero and the last point is that trace back starts from highest scoring cell and move back to the value which is still positive while in the uh, needleman we, we used to start from the right bottom and move to the top left right uh, Okay, now let's start uh, with an example, a brief example, uh, because you have already go, go, gone through the uh, Needleman one algorithm. So this will be easier for you to understand. For example, here there are two sequences. One is A C C T A A G G, and the other is G G C T C A A T C A. The match score is plus two, mismatch score is minus one, and gap penalty is minus two. So again, as uh, we discussed, that the first row and the first column will be uh, inserted as uh, all the values will be zero like we have insert here inserted here zeros in the first row and zero in all the next columns and then we start to align one by one moving from left to right top to bottom uh, so what do you think what would be the next value here now there there are three possibilities as we have discussed in the needleman watch algorithm like we have to move from horizontally uh, sorry vertically horizontally and diagonally and insert a value here so if we are uh, if we add uh, if we see that a and g are not aligned uh, uh, not similar sequence so this is a mismatch so diagonally we will add a mismatch value and zero plus mismatch value as we have shown in the previous slide is minus one so zero plus minus one is minus one and if we add from uh, horizontally a minus gap value is minus 2 0 minus minus 2 equals to minus 2 and if we add vertically 0 minus again we are adding gaps so 0 plus minus 2 equals to minus 2 so from here diagonally we are getting minus 1 horizontally and vertically we are getting minus 2 and the fourth possibility which is different from uh, Nilman once is 0 so and then we add uh, so we can see that there are four possibilities minus one minus two minus two and zero so what do you think what is the maximum value out of these four the maximum value is zero so we will insert zero here right and uh, then we will start moving uh, in the right uh, from left to right and and complete the whole matrix 
So what do you think? What would be the next value here? Again, there is a mismatch, and in this mismatch, we will add from uh, ver uh, uh, vertically 0 plus minus 2, 0 plus minus 2, that is the gap value, 0, and from uh, horizontally 0 plus minus 2, that is minus 2, again the gap value, diagonally, that is 0 plus minus 1, that is minus 1, and the last possibility is again 0. So the maximum value is 0, and again we will insert a 0 here. So we will move like uh, this to the next uh, to uh, to fill the whole matrix. So now you can see that uh, the whole matrix is filled and the it is filled similar to the way it was filled in Needleman once. The only one difference in filling the matrix is instead of putting a negative value here, we are inserting the zero value to just to identify the regions which are highly similar. So you can see that uh, the and the, the next difference uh, between Needleman and Smith Waterman is that here we start from the maximum value, the traceback and alignment start from the maximum value to the value when it is still positive. Uh, so here you can see that the maximum value is six. From six we will move towards from six we will move towards four, and from four we will move to two because we are trace uh, we are just tracebacking, and we are just finding the alignment. And from 4 to we move to 2 and this is the last cell for the alignment. So here you can see that from 6 to 4, 4 to 2, 2 to 4 and then 2. Uh, the last cell that is 2. Yeah. Now if we align these two sequences one by one you can see that uh, first, uh, first alignment is between C and C, right? from uh, there is a match from here it there is a match so we will add a I write like this uh, you can see here down like C there's a match so say there's a C right the next is there is a again there's a match between T and T so again we will write similar to what is written here T and again there's a T next there is a you can see that now uh, Again, C, there is no alignment and uh, we are adding a gap value here. So we will use, uh, we will write like there is C and there is, uh, just because we added a gap here, we will write like this and there is a C and there is a gap. And the, uh, okay. So in the next, you can see that after C, there is a, a gap, there is alignment between A and A. So we will write the alignment like A and A. And then, then the last there's an, another another similar sequence that is A and A and we can see that there's an A and A. So this is the overall locally aligned sequence we identified between the two set of sequences. Clear? So this is the way we do the uh, alignment, then trace back, and from trace back we do the uh, we align the two sequences. Yes, so for bioinformaticians, uh, this this is BioStrings R library. You can use it for uh, Smith Waterman pairwise alignment, and uh, it's uh, very easy for also for non bioinformaticians R language is very pretty and very easy. You just have to use packages for the alignment. And uh, okay, so one example in the last that um, find the best local alignment between the, these two sequences. TCA, GTT, GCC, and AGG, TGG. Take it with the plus one for match, minus two for mismatch, and minus two for gap. So again, this whole matrix is filled for you. After filling the alignment, you can see that there is a maximum value in this alignment is four. So starting from four, you move to the next arrow that is three. From three, the value is two, and from two, the value is one. Right? So this is the whole. Uh, a uh, small stretch of sequence which is similar between the two and now one by one you can align the two like the first one is g and g here uh, g and g which are line and score is one then t and t uh, and then t and t again and then the last one is g and g so it's very easy and i think uh, now i you guys can do it on your uh, notebook and we can discuss in the class in the discussion section so good luck guys assalamu alaikum bye bye